Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video I'm going to show you my Nepenthes and then show you how I clean them up. I've had them for about two years and they've grown quite a bit. So I have two and they were purchased at different times about a few months uh, difference and they were I would say they were about this big. They were in a five or six inch pot and I've transferred them to bigger baskets. So these baskets are about 10 inch wide. Um, they're not that big, but what happens is that the Nepenthes absolutely love in being inside the greenhouse, being grown with the orchids, and that's how I grow these. Okay, so I'm a little bit short <laughs> and I'm not able to get in front of the camera that much, but these are the baskets that I purchased from uh, from Home Depot and they were only about $6 each. They're plastic so they're lighter and I wanted something a little bit lighter because I don't want to have a lot of weight on my bars. My bars are made of metal but still I have a lot of things hanging off of the bars so the plastic is just to reduce the weight of the entire bar. Um, and what I've done is I just mix uh, regular soil with a lot of sand. So I would say about a third sand and two thirds soil. I also have some perlite in there, but the sand really helps to increase um, the water flow through this. Uh, my plants, uh, I've been lazy, so I don't use distilled water, but it is recommended. Uh, that you have distilled water or uh, reverse osmosis, which is also something that I don't have access to. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Nepenthes or about carnivorous plants in general, head over to Brad's greenhouse because he is the king of carnivorous plants. That's where I got interested in carnivorous plants. I used to watch his channel. Actually, it was the first channel uh, about growing that I've ever watched. In the winter, I don't water as often. I water about once a week. Uh, and I do water these more than I do my orchids just because they need a little bit more moisture. In the summer, I water them once a day or once every other day because it dries out really quickly. I hang them up here so they get a lot of sunlight. They get as much light as my Vandas. I'm going to be cleaning these pitchers up um, and then I will show you guys how I fertilize them. I have some pitchers here that definitely needs to be removed so I'm just going to get my scissors and this one is not working that well but I have a I have alcohol here that I just I purchase a uh, spray on top and I just put it in here usually these fit all of the bottles um, so I'm just gonna spray this is really useful because then you don't have to pour over your scissors it's a good way to sterilize everything and it's just so easy and then if I see like a bug if it's a mealy bug or something I'll just spray it as well since this is from the same plant, I don't have to sterilize every time I cut off a pitcher. But if you see anything that's, like say this one, that's dying, it's completely brown. And it the brown goes all the way to the top of the leaf, like so. Then just cut that one off. And sometimes what happens is my pitchers just get stuck to each other. And... You just kind of like have to pull them out. A lot of these are halfway dead, but I'm just going to cut them anyway. And I'm going to cut these even though it's still green up here. I'm just going to cut them all the way up to the leaf. And that way they're just not pulling on each other. And you just keep on going. So 
sometimes you run into kind of questionable ones where they look like they're going to develop a picture but it's actually dry at the very end and that's something that I'm just going to cut off anyway because if it's already dried at the end it's not going to grow another um, it's not going to grow another picture in there because it's already dead right there so just cut it all off so I have something like this here where this is a new leaf it's very soft and shiny and green however the picture at the very end is brown and it's dry and this happens when there's something in the environment either if it, it's too cold or it's too dry something that happened that the plant didn't like and it killed off the pitcher this happens a lot during the winter time because it's cold and also the humidity inside the greenhouse kind of drops a little bit uh, due to the heaters that i have um, going on pretty much all the time at night so it dries out the environment and then since I can't mist it or I don't water it as often the humidity drops a little bit and the pitchers die however in the summer time these pitchers usually develop and they develop at a very fast rate because there's just a lot of airflow it's warm the humidity is up because i'm always missing every single day from the morning to at night so the pitchers have a great time just developing and this is also a good time to clean out your plant because you're preparing for the warmer season. So that's when most of these guys will start to grow. Some of the pitchers are already growing and there are like baby pitchers coming on, which they look really cute. So this is a great time to clean up your plant make sure that they don't have anything that snag on each other so a lot of the time what happens is my pitcher just kind of pulls on each other and it's hard to pull them apart later on once they've developed and sometimes what i've done is i try to unhook them from each other and that really doesn't help the plants because um the pitchers on each other and then they break apart or something bad happens to them it's just not a good idea to do them when they're already grown so this is an example of a baby pitcher that has died off so it's very tiny you can't really tell but inside that there there's actually a sh very tiny tiny shape of uh, the pitcher lips that's uh, that's growing however it's completely dead because it's dry and sometimes it's hard to see whether or not or to decipher where the, whether or not they're dead but usually they're hard and they're crispy and dry and that's something that I would just remove. However, if you're touching them and they're soft and fuzzy to the touch, that's something that's going to grow, so you don't want to remove those. If you have any dead leaves, like these are pretty brown. I, they don't usually get rid of their leaves, but sometimes it happens and you can just cut them off. It's pretty easy to do. I think I only have a few dead ones right here. Just pull them out, basically clean up all the brown, hard, crispy parts that aren't going to grow anymore. He wants to uh, start fresh, basically, with only your greens. And if you have leaves that are suspicious or they look like they're not doing well, you can remove them as well. So like say this one, this is turning kind of yellow on the yellow side and then there's a crispy part right here you can choose to remove them right now or you can just keep them on so then they can um, put energy back into the plant they can still absorb light and uh, get energy uh, so i'm just going to choose to keep these just because it's not too far gone but if you're 
if you just want to remove them that's fine too uh, just don't remove any of the good plants or the good leaves sorry um, these nepenthes you can actually cut off a piece and grow them so stick them back into the ground or do a bag method which i'm not going to really talk about uh here just because i don't want to have any more of the same plan so i'm not going to start growing them um but that's something that you can do also you can actually just get a cutting from someone else and grow them so that's a really cheaper way to uh, get new plants. If you already know someone who's willing to part with a little cutting, it's always good to have a about 10 inch of cutting. So you want something that's long. You don't want something that's like really, really short. It's not like the buying plants um, like IV where you can just get like two inches off of it and it'll grow like crazy. It's not like that. You do want a little bit uh, longer only because these do take a longer time to grow so you want to have a longer uh, piece of cutting so there's just a lot more energy to keep it uh, alive while it grows out its roots I just finished cleaning one plant and I'm going to show you guys how I fertilize this so I went to a carnivorous show carnivorous plant show once and I spoke with one of the speakers there and he was telling me about this book called I believe the Savage the Revised Savage Garden where this person who's been growing plants for a long time has done research on how to fertilize the plants and he recommended that you take one pellet of this osmocote and some of you guys um i'm saying this wrong osmocote osmocote that's right some of you guys are ready use this for your orchids if you're growing orchids uh this is definitely recommended for a lot of orchids and it's a, a, a slow release or what they're calling a smart release but it's a slow, slow release fertilizer so they come in a like little balls or pellet form and a lot of the time you're going to see these in the um, in the plants or in the orchids that you buy and some of you guys I think wonder like what are they you know are they some sort of egg or bug or something but they're actually not they're slow release fertilizer that you just sprinkle on to your orchids and every time you water them they slowly get to release into the plants over time and of course back to the nepenthes is um, the book recommends that you can put just one one of these pellets into a pitcher and it feeds the entire plant and it makes the plant grow faster it makes the pictures look great and a lot of people have done this so this is not something that's new but if in, in case it is you know the first time that you've heard of it uh, definitely I recommend using it if you have a plant that hasn't been growing or is growing very slow or the pictures are not developing that well uh, just put in one of these pellet into a pitcher and over time about a few months it's going to slowly release and get back into the plant feeds the plant um, I'm going to show you guys how I do it. It's just really simple. Just drop it in there and each of the pitcher has a little bit of a liquid in there. That's also to catch um, the bugs and so forth or any sort of animals that go in there. So that liquid is just going to um, kind of dilute the, uh, the fertilizer over time and feed 
the plant. Uh, the plants uh, are going to grow faster, the pictures develop nicer. Uh, I don't really have a problem with the plants growing because my plants were growing really crazy, but it's also really nice just to have something that's, you know, that looks good, right? So I'm gonna pull up the camera upwards to one of the pictures and show you guys how I do it. It's super simple. Okay, so here goes. It's a uh, jungle up here. It's kind of hard for me to even get up here, but uh, you want to pick a picture that's working. So a lot of my pictures like this one developed really weirdly and this is actually from last year. Pick a picture that's in good condition. This one is in great condition. It's a newer picture. It's not like um, an old one or a funky looking one like this one. Oh, I missed that one. I should have taken that one out. Um, and pick one that's already open because some of them look like they're not open yet. But I have two that I'm going to put in and then later on when my other pictures develop, I'm going to put them in there as well. You don't want to put it into every single picture though because then it's just, um, it's just not good for the plant because then you're kind of like over fertilizing the plant. So I'm just going to do it on two of them. So just one pellet pop it in one and two and that's pretty much it it's so easy um, in about two months you can definitely put it into other ones I have like a funky one up there but I'm not gonna go crazy my plants don't really need a lot of fertilizer because they grow really well and in the summertime they developed a ton of pictures and the pictures are actually bigger then um, these here, these are kind of like the ones that develop in the winter, so they're not as great, but it's always nice to just have a little bit of fertilizer just so your plant can have some food because when you're hungry, you get angry, which is like hangry, right? And you don't wanna get hangry because then it's just not good for ever anybody. So that's pretty much all when it comes to what I do for my Nepenthes. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye! It's been a few weeks since I did the cleaning portion of my video and I just want to show you what the progress for the Nepenthes have been. It's actually incredible just the amount of pictures and growth that it's put out. So in my last video, there were two pictures that were, that I had put the, um, the fertilizer in and you can see them here. But in addition to those two pictures that kind of developed during the spring season or the early spring season, all of these other ones have developed with it. Look at how long this plant has grown. So if you don't cut off these pieces, they will grow pretty long and this one is just kind of hanging down and I actually freed it because it was attached to the, uh, the bar up top and usually with the pitchers, what they do is they'll kind of curl like so and especially like this one, they'll curl and they'll kind of attach themselves to something kind of like a, uh, a vine, but not as intense. Um, so I don't think that's the right word. Anyway, uh, so there's the other plant, the other Nepenthes, and this one is also pretty big as well. I have one that's old right there, and that one was old from... Um, the last time I did the video, so I cleaned up this one as well, and just look at the hanging part. So there's one over here, and one over here as well. So I just want to show you guys the progress that they've made. Uh, it's just incredible how fast they grow when it gets warmer, and it's good to have a lot of humidity in here. I just turn off the mister, but it's always good to have a lot of humidity and a little bit of heat for these 
don't matter as much as say like if you have a Highland Nepenthes, there's always an airplane or a helicopter or an ambulance that flies by or drives by whenever I do videos like this. But yeah, okay, I'm just gonna cut this short because it's really annoying. So, bye you guys.